going to talk a little bit about all the releases. And thank you all for, for being here. Uh, as you know, uh, one of the things that we really concentrate is in doing a lot of small batch blends. As a matter of fact, our newest slogan is, uh, is uh, blending is in our DNA. And uh, by the way, the G is, is there for a reason. It, uh, we did a little thing and it, people look more when there's uh, uh, something outside of the normal pattern and they look more. So it's not like it's coming down. But, um, uh, I thought so, it was the rum. Well, yeah, no, Could yeah, be. yeah. Well, this is a little medication. By the way, after we'll invite you, you guys want to have some uh, rum. I'm uh, it's, uh, drinking a, a, if you follow me in, in Facebook, you know that I'm a, uh, uh, I really enjoy rum, and this is Ron Diplomatico from Venezuela, which I really enjoy. Some of the newcomers, guys, if you can present yourself and take uh, where are you guys from? Where are you from? Ah, excellent, excellent. Thank you, welcome. So, uh, as you know, we have been doing a small batches for, for a period of time, and that's something that we really enjoy, and we found a little niche within the niche industry, which is the cigar, and the small batch, our first one was the M356 that we released, and obviously last year the AU4 got the highest uh, rated cigar. Um, we are continuing making the AU4 at 5.5. Do you know where the numbers come from? The numbers? No, you know. I know you know. Okay. F55, for example, is Friday, the 55 day for the year. We always put the name uh, in the name of the brand, our number, uh, which is when we develop the blend. So obviously, if uh, my first one was the AU Room M356, uh, it's Monday, the 356 of the, the year, uh, day of the year. So the, one of these I want to tell you is all of the new releases. So we we do present a lot of new releases every year. Uh, so let's start with the AU Room again, Quattro. S55. As I mentioned, the AU Room Quattro S55. Let me take this out so you can see it a little bit better. The AU Room Quattro S55 is a cigar that we were very proud. Not only because they got the number two cigar of the year by Cigar Aficionado, but also we uh, we have just been re uh, receiving a lot of great reviews from consumers alike. And that's a cigar that is made with uh, a wrapper from the year 2003, a Sumatra. Since it's a small, uh, a small batch, it's gonna end, uh, but for the meantime, I, I have wrapper that I do it. And this year we did a, something about it, a very different uh, that I have never done before. I released a new size, <clears throat> AE Room uh, uh, Quattro di Socio. And uh, AE Room di Socio. And I would like, this is a, a partnership with Alliance Cigars. Alliance is a distributor out of uh, New York. And Tom Sullivan will tell you a little bit. Tom, come here for a second. Uh, this is Tom from uh, Alliance Cigars. Tom is a person, go this way. Tom is, excuse me for a second, guys. Tom, uh, as you see, a young guy like Tom, but it's been on the industry for many, many years. Actually, before I was born, but uh, he, he just, uh, <laughs> He's just started since he was in high school. So tell us a little bit about Alliance and we'll tell you a little bit about this new project that is only one size uh, on the on the Agent Room Quad Red 5 5. So it's gonna be a little bit different because it's, this one is distributed exclusively by Alliance. So tell them where the socio is and okay. where uh, the Alliance The socio is, is uh, my maternal grandfather's surname. Uh, he had passed before I was born, but I grew up listening to all the stories about his passions in life. Uh, one of them being uh, cigars. He was an Italian immigrant. Now, Rafi and I have been friends for many years and have, have worked together for many years. And uh, I was honored when he asked if he could make a special size of his all-time highest rated cigars uh, just for our company. Uh, we're a national distributor of all the well-known premium brands. And so we named it De Socio. This is the fifth uh, De Socio. Um, over the last couple of years, we were honored by Papin Garcia with the Flor de las Antillas, uh, Oliva V. Milano, uh, Pensado, as well as the Tempest from Alexander. So every, every mayor, every number one cigar of the year has done a special size for Tom and Alliance Cigars under their social uh, name. 
when he came to, to me with the idea and we started discussing this idea, I wanted to do something very special. So if you guys are familiar with this size, I make it in, in my uh, fortissimo uh, line. And uh, this is a size that is very dear to me and I only do it because we are very good friends because uh, this, this I enjoy. I enjoy smoking cigars, I enjoy smoking many of the brands or most of the brands that are here in this show and I enjoy small sizes. And this 47 by five and three quarter cigar is fantastic. I really enjoy how it, it is, uh, 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 the dynamics when you box press something like this. So this is- uh, A lot of the wrapper really comes through too. In that the ring flavor game. you can really enjoy, plus that, that size. So uh, a special project uh, dedicated only to Alliance Cigars. Not being distributed by us, but uh, made by others. One of the things that we have been doing good we're starting to do is uh, join ventures and working with other companies. As you know, we just introduced our, uh, with Altadis, the Romeo by Agent Room, which is a partnership, something that I do in my factory. We created the brand, the brand and they distributed. So we believe that these partnerships helps companies like us and due to friendships and people that have a tremendous experience on the market, as Tom has for many years, uh, will help us uh, to grow and, and to show uh, uh, really uh, the potential of my small small batches. So uh, the socio F55, F55. Before you guys go, I'll be sitting in the table in the back. I've got samples, I've got some materials with the story and much of what we discussed. So if I can answer any other questions, I'll be available to you. And uh, thank you very, very much for your help and support. And uh, that's what our business at the end of the day is about. It's these relationships and friendships built over many Absolutely. years. Absolutely. And this is how I feel about uh, the online and the magazines and the media. For us, that we have very limited resources as a small company, we have two ways of doing. Well, either we raise our prices because the, our tobacco is very well aged, it's, uh, our margins are very low, and we don't want a cigar for $15, $20. So what we do is uh, we count on people like you to spread the word and to do the reviews. And by the way, I've always asked to review that have been honest and, and, and really uh, uh, because uh, we have a relationship doesn't mean I want a high rating in your reviews. Whatever it is, it is. And that's what it helps us to continue doing the good work. We're so just we, very we lucky. Without that feedback, I mean, without yeah. that feedback it's without hard to the feedback, the it's, it's hard to improve. And we and we enjoy the high ratings, but but <laughs> you know when they're not high we you know we, we work harder. So based on the F fifty five we are now introducing the F-59. Now, as you know, again, I mentioned, this is the Friday, the 59th day. However, it's always true in our blends except in this one. <laughs> There's always an exception. And the exception is when we came out with the aging room, it was gonna, this one quarter, the new, the new generation, was gonna be Tias and Thomas 59. So I got a call from a good friend of the industry, and he said, Raphael, uh, congratulations and everything else is going. However, I heard about the new blend and the new uh, uh, number T59, and uh, I, I feel a little bit painful to, uh, that you're using that because that's a very dear number. And uh, do you guys know who the person I might be referring to? Jonathan. Jonathan Drew. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I, although you know he said nothing legal, we're gonna do anything. But you know what? We decided we're gonna make an exemption and change the T to an F, just because I believe that everyone works very hard in the industry to earn what they've done. And I'm a big fan of what Jonathan Drew has done with his company and his brands. And I didn't want it, uh, him to feel any minimal, not, not any pain, besides I told him take a pill or whatever, but I, uh, <laughs> but I, I decided when, when we release it, it's an F, 59 in your room quad. Now this is a Maduro. So what do you do after you get a second highest rated cigar? You say, well, we need to work harder. And we have access to a tremendous amount of very well aged uh, tobacco. And the F59, something that we are extremely proud of, is Habano with tobacco from a single farm in the Dominican Republic. So this is Puro, a Habano uh, Dominican wrapper, and everything, the binder and the filler, everything aged over 10 years. This is something that we, we really, really, I, when I, uh, I was working on the Romeo project, 
this is the first uh, rapper that I had in mind, uh, but we had another rapper that we decided to do it with them, uh, with them, which is also as well as Asia disc. But this is a over 10 year old rapper. Now, as you know, Dominican doesn't have a lot of rappers. Uh, Opus X was one of the first time ones that I believe acquaintances started growing. Uh, but thanks to uh, to our partner Roji, we have access to a tremendous amount of well aged tobacco, and uh, and this comes from that from that farm, uh, the Hagawa area, which is uh, on the Cibao region, happens to have the the, the deepest topsoil in the world. And this is something that we uh, we are very proud. I can wait for you guys to taste. Everyone will take a cigar. Uh, as some of you received the, the cigars that were earlier in a, in a single, the others will receive it. So Carlos will make sure you get that little uh, commemorative uh, one that it says uh, IPCPR 2015. If you guys have any questions at the end, you will feel free. So these are available in the same sizes that we have the original AG room F55. These are the same uh, price uh, of the other sizes, nine dollars to uh, ten or five, or ten fifty, I believe, the Churchill sizes. So you guys remember from last year, some of you, my big number one, right? My engine room being number one uh, is aged with tobacco from 1997, 1998, and 1999. I believe it's, this is some of the oldest, by far, some of the oldest tobacco in, in the market. Hopefully they're going to shut up in a minute. <laughs> I'm glad that I have my medicine. So let me take a let me take a doctor mandated uh, medicine. So the B number one last year, I released it on three sizes. Again, this one I know you guys know that I always call the name of the size a musical term. This one is key, musical key, and these are uh, the C major. Uh, I don't have my my, my glasses. Minor, the D minor, minor, minor and the G major and the C major, G. Well, the G major, uh, 52, 54, and 63 ring sizes. These two, I have been trying to do a Lancero for a long time. Uh, Lancero is something that is coming back. A lot of people, I remember when I started smoking cigar, that was the size of the connoisseurs, you know, people smoke that cigar. It's not very easy to make. Not every cigar roller can make this. <coughs> but we decided uh, to do it because my son, Rafael and Hank has been after me to make uh, to make a Lancero, but I wanted to do something perfect. Uh, one of the good things and bad things of being on the eye and getting good rating is people expect only top-notch cigars. So average for us is not a, a, an option anymore. We have to every single one do it on a standard, a very high standard. And I happen to believe that this Lancero D minor is our best blend per size that I ever done. Uh, it is an unbelievable size that we, I, I, I was surprised when we came out with this. This uh, blend, the B number one on this particular size, just goes hand in hand perfect on this. And the next release that we did is the B number one D major. Now this is a special one because in my factory, I listen, I smoke a lot of cigars from other people. We have many great cigars. One of the top, uh, most famous cigar manufacturers in Dominican Republic was at our factory, smoking the big number one. And since he knows that I do a lot of box press, he asked me, hey, let me have one of these box presses. I said, I don't make a box press. He said, well, maybe you should try it. That day we went for lunch in Dominican and when uh, later uh, I asked my people to make it uh, a box press. Uh, we adjusted the blend a little. And that evening we went for dinner and we tried this cigar. This, uh, cigar, uh, I believe the blend was made to be box press. This is a 54 ring size by 6, uh, one of my most uh, uh, dear sizes, I enjoy a 54. Uh, I make some bigger than one, but I think that's the biggest that I personally enjoy smoking. And uh, this cigar again has the same tobacco from 97, 98 and 1999. And, uh, it is box press. Now we only made of these uh, 1,600 boxes of these uh, uh, 18 cigars, and that's the only thing we are, are releasing. Uh, MSRP is $13.90, and uh, 
Um, so it's a little bit more pricey uh, than, than everything else because obviously we have to account for the cost of the individual box. But it's something great for gift and something that people can, can take uh, for a long time and age it. And another release that we did today, this year is the, uh, the same size, the same... Uh, Carlos, tell them a little bit about the, the M19 as I take more breaks, uh, more medicine uh, breaks. <laughs> yesterday we had no air conditioning here. Normally they put it at the end. And uh, yesterday we had our sales meeting about three, two, three hours uh, with different people. And uh, I, I really suffer a lot. And then the drinking last night didn't help either. <laughs> well, the M19 is uh, part of our Fortissimo series. Um, the Fortissimo series, what we try to incorporate were uh, full-bodied cigars. Um, the M21, uh, we featured a uh, Dominican Pearl. The M20, we had the uh, San Andres wrapper. Only 2,000 boxes were able to be made with such a rare tobacco that we used. For the M19, it's a, a Dominican Habano Puro. It's a, a very full body, but with a lot of tremendous amount of flavor, which is what my father always tried to use when he blends his cigars, is a great amount of flavor, no matter how strong the cigar. It's something that you could enjoy. So that's what the M19 features. Who here has tried the, the, the Portissimo series? Yeah, so we kind of go back on the numbers. Uh, M20, 21, 20, and 19 now. Monday. <laughs> now, most of our blends, by the way, are made in, in December, January, and February. Just happened that that's the, the lowest uh, month for uh, production. Uh, see, if things are winding out, then January start uh, moving up. And those are the months that we take to, uh, to do the blending. And as you can see, we do a lot of small batches. So our blending in our factory, I like to say, is a lab. We continue, but many are good, some are not good, and we continue working. So we've been blessed because all the new releases have been done. So this one is only uh, 2,000 boxes. 2000, 2000 boxes. We decided to do a box press just like the M20, uh, M9, M20, M20, because it has, uh, it's, 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 we just love how a box press on that side. That's why we decided to do it on the social as well. So besides the socio, in the F55, this is the next, uh, the next one we do that. Okay, so we're gonna move to the next part to tell you a little bit about our other new releases. Last year, uh, La Boheme, um, just, just a fantastic cigar for us, has done very well. Um, got uh, rated about 91 and 92 in different, uh, in different publications. Um, the original La Boheme that we released last year, my father was trying to incorporate three of his passions in life, which is music, cigars, and Cuba. And that's exactly what you get when you, when you feel from looking at this box and the presentation of it. It's a very Cuban-esque feel to it. Now this blend was made very different from what we normally blend our cigars. He blended it to based on, on an aroma that he got from his grandfather back in Cuba. So it was well, my grandfather was smoking cigars and I was not allowed to smoke or anything like that. Uh, even a sneak and get a little cigar. I came from Cuba when I was 15, so this must have been when I was 9, 10, 11, 12. And uh, if you're like me, sometimes you go to a place and you remember the the smells, right? And I I always remember the aroma of those cigars uh, that my grandfather used to smoke with his friends in the right out, uh, front of the house. So this one was blended trying to duplicate the aroma that I that I uh, that I remember and that's how I blend this, this cigar so I like to say it's trying to do the golden age of the Cuban the Cuban cigars so this year we expanded and we expanded to La Boheme Encantador tell us a little bit about that um, the Encantador the newest uh, series on the La Boheme Encantado, we, get, we got its name. Uh, my father was actually smoking a cigar with someone. And when he was sampling the cigar, he this said... This one is an uh, owner of a very famous a cigar magazine. Bread. And uh, we're smoking that cigar. And, and he mentioned that the cigar was very enchanting. 
I never heard enchanting uh, to describe a cigar, mm -hmm. and that has stuck with me. And I was nervous when this person was smoking a cigar, uh, because normally that person that smoke a cigar in the first few pops is a good, continue smoking or throw it away and bad. But this person was smoking the cigar, and I was nervous because it smokes about a quarter of a cigar without saying anything. So I was extremely nervous. And uh, finally I asked, what do you think about the cigar? And the guy looked at me and I said, this is enchanting, Rafael. And uh, of course, you know, you have used different terminology to describe, but I never heard enchanting. So when we were coming out with an extension on La, La Boheme, I just changed that to uh, Spanish, just in case he wanted royalty. He said, you know, it's different. It's a Spanish version. So I, I, I call it uh, Encantador. Um, it features a uh, Dominican binder and filler. And I'm not mistaken, it's an Ecuadorian, yeah, an Ecuadorian Habano Ecuadorian. wrapper. Now, like what my father was saying on the other side, is that we really like the way the box press on our cigars. And it works well, and it just gives, it changes the complexity of a cigar and its flavors, but it, it does it for the better. And so that's what we incorporated here. If we box pressed it, and it just gives it a tremendously great type of cigar that we have here. Now, we normally name the sizes, like I say, the musical terms. On this particular one, as you know, La Boheme is a famous opera from Puccini. We decided to name here based on the theaters where the opera was first performed. The first theater was in the city of Turin, now Turin, Italy. The actual theater was uh, radio. And when we were coming to print and do the boxes and the printing material, my art uh, guy said, oh, wait a minute, that sounds familiar, radio. Uh, Tatuaje has a radio. And again, I don't want it to have problems with anyone, so, uh, so we change it to the city of Turin. But in the other two are the next theaters where the opera were performed. And uh, one, uh, the second one was in La Fenice. La Fenice is a theater in Venice. I was there two years ago for Carnival, and I was able to see La Boheme there, and uh, an amazing experience. And then in La Scala in Milan. Uh, so I know you travel there a lot. I was not able to see La Boheme in La Scala, but I saw another, another opera there that was uh, amazing. And uh, I'm always jealous when you put all these pictures on Italy, uh, because I just happen to love uh, Italy very much. And, uh, and of course, they eat a lot, they drink a lot, they party a lot. My type of, my type of country. And, uh, and then the next release this year is the SWAG uh, Connecticut. Uh, as you know, SWAG, it was my first uh, introduction outside the Oliveros brand. And Swag Puro Dominicano was the first one. It's very dear to me, but we kind of abandoned the Swag for a little bit because this, the aging room took off and uh, we concentrated on that. So last year we introduced the new uh, uh, Swag Black, and it was, uh, we used to have another one called Swag South Beach. And uh, many people told us that's a very gay color, that's a very this thing, <laughs> and uh, all these type of the colors. And, um, and Sometimes men, you know, uh, we need to, uh, when we're smoking a cigar, we don't like a bluish type of color. And uh, uh, we, although it's a great cigar, it did extremely well in some regional areas, but it was not good nationwide. And uh, obviously when we stopped selling that cigar, we sold more after we stopped making it than before, because once you tell people it's no longer available, people want it. But uh, we decided to come up with a swag black. It was more representative for the national aspect that we're trying to do the cigar. So this year we introduced in the swag Connecticut. Now, keep in mind, we're sitting last year coming up with idea for this year, because this takes a long time to come up. We just don't come on it. And then we find out that many of the cigars uh, makers are doing Connecticut, you know. And it's funny because last year we introduced La Boheme, which is at uh, Ecuadorian, uh, Ecuadorian Habano, and then we get here after we work for two years on the blend, we get here and there are a lot of Ecuadorian Habano. And now we come with a Che, and there are many, many people uh, doing uh, uh, a Che cigar. Because who, what is, a, you guys know what is the number one seller wrapper in the United States? Connecticut. It's Connecticut. Now, I prefer a stronger body cigars and more flavorful to it. And a lot of the Connecticut these days is grown in Ecuador. So what I did, we actually got access to a, 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 
a Connecticut that is a hybrid from an Habano and a Connecticut seed. So we call it Habano, uh, Connecticut Brown. Uh, this is because it's Habano, uh, some of the characteristics of the flavorful of the Habano and some of the characteristics of the, of the Connecticut. So it's new. We're trying to do just different things, not do the same thing as everyone else. So this is a more milder cigar by far, but it has a lot of flavor, which is are the three characteristics that when I, I make a cigar. So this complete our new releases this year, obviously in addition of, of everything else that, that we make, the, the Maduro and another uh, Connecticut Habao, but this is, uh, this is uh, really a representation of where we're going as a company. Continue releases, the, the combination with uh, 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 um, Alliance Cigars, uh, to do some partnerships uh, with company and the Romeo that we're doing, a partnership with the different companies. Uh, you guys have any questions about this?